This is a cooperative. What a cooperative is, is it's owned either by the people who work in it or the people who use it. I wanted to create a cooperative because when you look back in black history, if you're the guy, you can either be literally assassinated or your character assassinated, right? Um, and when you look at white America, no one ever says who's the white leader. Who's the, who's the white leader, right? Because there are several white leaders. And I wanted to show folks that there has been, there, there is no one black leader. There's no one black voice. It's a cooperative and a collective voice. So I wanted to build something that is cooperative and collective. Also, when you look at great black businesses, there's been a problem of succession planning, right? So your business is dope as long as you're alive. And then when you die, now the business is gone, right? So we don't want, we don't want that. You know, I don't want the owners to be on my children that have to take this on. If they want to go and be a dentist, they should be able to go and be a dentist or whatever they want to be. And I mean, it's also a grocery. What are African-Americans dying of more than anything? It's not the bullet, it's the fork, right? So diabetes, hypertension, stroke, high blood pressure, you name it, we're dying off of what we eat. And we're eating that stuff a lot of times because we don't have a lot of options, right? We go to our corner store and we get what's what I call edible non-foods filled with stuff that's in your tire, the same stuff that's in your pillow, the same stuff that's, you know what I mean? That literally will, can kill you. And I want to give people an option. And we want to show them that you can do that and it tastes good. Genghis Khan, you know, has a quote, and I'm paraphrasing that, it's not just about winning, but making sure that people lose. And a lot of folks have that mentality as if there's like this, there's what, the myth of scarcity, right? There's this little bit of money and we got to fight over this little bit of money. Nah, bruh, there's a lot of money out here, right? And there's enough for you to be able to go on vacation and me to be able to go on vacation. There's enough for you to put your kids in tutoring and me to put my kids in tutoring. Your kid doesn't have to be denied tutoring so my kid can have it. And, and that's what I want to break. I want to break that. They've divided us so long. This porch is going to provide jobs. This porch is going to co uh, provide community sustainability. This porch is going to be a gathering place for the elders in the community to come and talk about war stories, play dominoes, um, drink their coffee. Right? And this porch is gonna be a safe place with free Wi-Fi for young folks to come and do homework, come chill out on their phone. Um, this porch is gonna be an example for other porches. And this porch is gonna be replicated nationally as a safe economic engine in black communities throughout the country and hopefully throughout the world. So this porch is a porch of ambition.